So I, I, I became, my family became a Jehovah's Witness when I was uh, about seven years old after my mom uh, found the courage to leave my violent father. So she was already in a vulnerable situation. Um, so her and my grandmother um, joined the Jehovah's Witnesses quite quickly, actually. Um, and within si six months of um, joining, um, she met somebody within the religion and... Um, when they got married, he was like a ministerial servant, which is a, a kind of minor um, role of authority in the religion. Um, and from that point, our lives just revolved around that religion. So there are three meetings a week. Um, you need to do a Bible, a family Bible study for an hour every week, and then you have your individual Bible study for an hour every week. Um, you have to prepare for all of the meetings, and you go on the ministry, which is the door knocking, you know, when they come around your house. You have to prepare for the ministry, um, and then there's like a Bible text that you have to read in the morning. So it's like a really busy, <laughs> busy life <laughs> being a Jehovah's Witness. Um, so, but uh, I kind of like the extra reading. I liked reading as a child and I liked learning about the Bible stories and I had a lot of questions and that's when the problems began. <laughs> You're not really supposed to question it. Um, so I used to ask a lot of questions about it all and I used to get into quite a lot of trouble for asking questions. Um, I remember asking about, I was just talking to another ex-Jehovah's Witness friend and we had the same question about dinosaurs because the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in creationism but they also believe dinosaurs did exist and I I remember asking my mom, um, well, why did Jehovah make the dinosaurs? Uh, I was just going to kill them all anyway. <laughs> and uh, she said, well, uh, it's because uh, they needed to eat all the excess vegetation. I was like, oh, okay. But some of the dinosaurs had, like, really sharp teeth and, like, claws and things. They ate meat. She said, well, uh, they were to eat the vegetarian dinosaurs. <laughs> 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 and I was like, well... Um, why didn't he just make the right amount of trees and plants in the first place? <laughs> well, that was a really stupid question, apparently. Um, and so I had loads of these questions. Um, uh, another one with uh, Balaam's ass was this uh, a guy that was off to go and kill the Israelites, and his donkey started talking to him. Jehovah made his donkey talk to him to stop him from killing the Israelites. And I was like, well, how did how did the donkey talk? I mean, they don't have a voice box. They don't have tongues like us, and they don't. Um, I was really confused by that and she said well maybe it's like uh, Rod and Emu which was a, uh, a children's program in the 80s um, <laughs> with a ventriloquist and I was like oh okay so so Jehovah made the um, donkey talk and uh, she said uh, she said yeah um, that's uh, that's true and, uh, and I said well they should really write that because it's not clear it says here that the donkey spoke and they should really so anyway so I got into a lot of trouble for that and after that it was decided that my stepfather should take my bible study because uh, he was a lot more experienced and knew more uh, more about the bible so these bible studies used to last for like two hours because I had so many questions um, if you've ever read the bible there's a lot in there that doesn't really quite make sense um, so but but that would always end up with me getting told off uh, quite a lot and, uh, until I cried. And, um, and I'd be told that I was going to die at Armageddon for asking so many uh, questions. And I'd be read scriptures and all the different ways that you could get killed at Armageddon by Jehovah. So um, bearing in mind, I was like eight, nine years old. So it's, it was a pretty stressful time. I used to have a lot of nightmares and things about all the different ways you could die at Armageddon. Um, that's talked about quite a lot in the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, we even had a survival box in the loft, <laughs> so with lots of like tins of baked beans and uh, uh, toilet rolls and things like that. So we were pretty much going to live for two weeks at, during Armageddon on cold baked beans. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, Jehovah's Witnesses also believe in demon possession. As a family, we didn't have a lot of money, so we didn't really have any books other than Jehovah's Witness books and the Bible, of course. Um, an old lady and the congregation uh, took pity on us, um, me and my sisters, and she gave us all her daughter's old books. So Enid, Enid Blyton books and books about animals and things like that. Um, anyway, it was later discovered that she'd once done a seance, and so it was it thought that the books might be possessed by demons. Um, so um, they didn't really know which book it was, so all our books got burnt. Um, so, you know, a lot of them I didn't have a chance to read. <laughs> I'm still annoyed about that. <laughs> um, yeah, so I still had a lot of 
too many questions, um, but what I, and I was still getting into a lot of trouble about it. So what I then discovered, I thought I had a really genius way of getting around uh, being able to ask questions, was I discovered that if I asked, what if a Catholic person um, said da 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 da, what would I say to that person to convince them that we were right? And I thought, oh, this is a really, I thought this is a really great way to be able to ask questions. And it was okay, then I was allowed to ask more questions if I framed it in a way as though I already believed it was true. Um, the trouble is, and I'm not really proud of this, um, if you frame questions in terms of you already believe it, it doesn't really take that long until you do believe it all. And um, it didn't take that long until I did believe it all and I stopped asking questions. Um, and um, yeah, I really believed it all. And I really believed that Armageddon was coming really soon and everybody except the Jehovah's Witnesses was gonna die. I also believed it was right that I shouldn't have a, bl a blood transfusion if that was ever needed and I should die instead and that children should die instead and I would sign a little card <coughs> even as a child um, to take around with me to say if that should ever happen, let me die instead. Um, in fact, I remember as a teenager reading uh, Watchtower magazine stories of um, children and teenagers and adults that had died from um, not taking a blood transfusion. And I remember I even felt inspired by their stories of martyrdom. And I thought they was, were good stories. Anyway, so um, after leaving school, um, I didn't get very good GCSEs because I never did any homework with all that Bible reading. There wasn't really a lot of time. Um, and after that, I became a regular pioneer, which means you do 90 hours a month door knocking. You don't get paid for that. <laughs> um, and I was pretty pious, quite self-righteous, to be honest. Um, and then at about the age of 20, I started having doubts again. And um, it was quite stressful. I tried to suppress those thoughts. Um, and it made me ill, um, trying to suppress that. Eventually, after skipping a couple of meetings, um, my mom kicked me and my sister, uh, my younger sister, out of home. Uh, she was also not going to the meetings anymore. She hadn't done for a while. Uh, my sister was in the middle of her A-levels, and um, I had coincidentally just been made redundant from my job. So uh, we were homeless, uh, without money, uh, without income. Um, uh, so, and, and when you're in the Jehovah's Witnesses, you're not allowed friends outside of the religion. And when you leave the religion, uh, no one in the religion is allowed to talk to you anymore. So when you leave, you have nobody, literally. So that's tough, and um, I think it was kind of traumatic, to be honest with you. Um, anyway, I made friends pretty quick, um, and with, I had a couple of weeks left at work uh, before I was made redundant, and uh, my friend, but the guys at work I made friends with, I'm still friends with some of them today, and they were pretty awesome people. I went to nightclubs for the first time, went dancing, went drinking, did a lot of drinking, <laughs> uh, went crazy for a while and had boyfriends, and that was exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, I just I tried to do as many normal things as a 21-year-old would do. And, uh, yeah, so I went crazy for a while, and that was really good fun. I was free. Um, and, yeah, eventually calmed down. And at the age of 28, I uh, felt like I'd missed out on education, so I wanted to go back into education, so I did A-levels. And um, I really loved doing A-levels, and I remember my first week of doing A-levels, and they said, everything that you read, uh, every argument, doesn't matter how convincing this argument is, you've got to criticize it, you've got to question it, you've got to evaluate it, you've got to find another argument, and, I, and uh, you can't just accept it straight away. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, not only are you allowed to ask questions, not only are you allowed to doubt things, you have to. And they give you good marks if you do it. <laughs> you get rewarded for it. So I really loved that. And I went to university, did a degree in psychology and got a master's as well and and so that was um, probably like the happiest time of my life being able to research set up experiments and, and learn and be free and uh, given that this is the free speech society I uh, just want to say if you've ever experienced not having the freedom to be able to doubt to question to speak what you think there's no way once you get it you ever want to lose that <laughs> Um, yeah, and so that's my story. 
Um, and I wanted to say a little bit about the ex Jehovah's Witness community because it's quite a, a, a big community out there. Um, it took me, after leaving the religion, about six years um, before I uh, had the courage to look up other ex-witnesses. Uh, you still have this kind of fear, which I think you do in other religions, um, of apostasy. And even the word apostate yeah. is kind of scary, and it literally makes you feel kind of sick. Um, and, I, and most ex-Jehovah's Witnesses have that experience. Um, so even when you put the word apostasy on, yeah. the, on the flyer, it sort of maybe go. <laughs> which is weird really um, but yeah so uh, anyway I found other ex Jehovah's Witnesses online mostly in America and I chatted all day every day for a really long time with ex Jehovah's Witnesses and um, I've made some really good friends through that and we all kept saying oh, you know what we should meet up and they would be really great and eventually I set a meet up in 2007 uh, for ex Jehovah's Witnesses and it started off in the back room of a library in Rochester because we were so scared that we'd meet actual Jehovah's Jehovah's <laughs> Witnesses, so we were like, oh, we're just having cups of tea in the back of the library, and eventually we realised this is silly, and we just went to the pub. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, and then the rest of the meetings started to be in London, and anyway, so that meetup group uh, is now run by a good friend of mine, Steve, and most of the meetings are in London. We have um, events at the British Museum where we talk about the actual history of the Bible, and... Um, and then most of them are just meetups in the pub where we just all make friends and chat. Um, and we have meetups all over the country of about 700 different me uh, members, so it's pretty cool actually. Um, and the online community is really taking off. Um, in the UK, we have like a, a Facebook group to offer support to ex-witnesses. Uh, a wonderful woman named Maris set this group up. It's absolutely amazing. We have about 20 different admin uh, uh, members and they off, we all offer support and as a whole community um, we all offer uh, emotional support to people. Uh, we have people that are suicidal, we've helped people who are active suicidal, we've uh, helped people who are homeless, um, abuse victims, um, a lot, as with a lot of Christian churches, uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses have a real problem with child abuse covering, covering child abuse um, up. They have this rule where there has to be for uh, rape or child abuse any kind of um, thing like that. There needs to have been two witnesses to find guilt. Um, generally, rapists and child abusers don't wait till there's two people watching, so no one's ever found guilty. Um, and even if there's like DNA evidence and the person's sent to prison, uh, they may not get disfellowship from the congregation. Um, even though you can get disfellowship without any witnesses watching for smoking a cigarette or reading uh, uh, anti-Jehovah's Witness uh, literature, you can get this fellowship for that. There doesn't need to be two witnesses watching for that. But rape and more serious things, there does. Um, so, yeah, so that's what we do. We're off for support. And we're uh, at the moment, um, there's people in the community um, um, s uh, working with the Charity Commission um, to investigate the Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, in Australia, there was recently uh, a royal commission into institutional um, uh, child abuse that happens in institutions and the Jehovah's Witnesses, they discovered there were over a thousand and six cases of child abuse. Not one was reported to the police and we have pretty much the same situation in the UK and we're kind of hoping for um, this will all come to light soon. So that's what, what we do. We don't talk about the depressing things all the time. <laughs> um, uh, it's about friendship and support and, um, and celebrating our freedom. But yeah. Thanks very much for that, Terry. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think, I think there's, there's so many trends that you can see across different religions when you look at that. Like you mentioned, the two witnesses. Um, you know, there's similar issues actually within, oh, really? uh, within, um, not all the time, but sometimes there are issues with witnesses within um, Muslim communities because there's, this, there's similar is issues with witnesses. So you can have two, I think, or four witnesses and there's issues about gender on that and stuff like uh, that. So it gets complicated. Um, yeah. And, and, and as you guys probably can see that, you know, um, it isn't all about the depressing stuff, but that that's important obviously, yeah. but, but it isn't just about the depressing stuff. It's about coming together. It's about yeah. finding people like yourself and all that. Um, and and that's kind of the, just as important, or if not more important. More, we spend you know, more time on the exactly, non-depressing exactly, stuff. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 